Hello my wonderful people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across my platform. If you like what you are watching, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications and that way you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. Here we are to all forms of videos. I want to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform for us to use to disseminate information to the members of the public. I at the same time put disclaimer that linda's tv show do not and will not in any way promote hate speech misleading information or violence we are only here to educate the members of the public my dear wonderful government in the homeland good evening fellow bear friends i welcome all of you to this emergency state of the union address of the biafra prime minister myself Mazi. Simon Ekba Njoku. My fellow beer friends, this is month of October 2024, and we are very close to our convention in Finland. The security of life and property of beer for people will always be the most priority of the Biafra government. And we will continue to respond proactively in solving and resolving the issue of security, especially when our people and our land comes under serious threat. Nigeria as a failed state will continue to fail to protect those that call themselves Nigeria citizens. The call for Biafra self-determination through the secessionists of Biafra or through the secession of Biafra as Nigeria terrorist state, fondly call it, is deeply rooted in historical grievances. The economic grievances and economic disparity and socio-political marginalization and now with the renewed Islamic Usman Danfodio expansionists. Our struggle has become a struggle for survival of the Biafra people. For many decades, Biafrans, both those who have agitated in the past, Biafrans, for many of these agitators have argued that for leaving Nigeria is not just about identity, but today it has become about the survival, progress, and justice. My fellow Biafrans, in the early hour of today, the 1st October 2024, the Biafra Defense forces has destroyed neutralized the proposed facility that was built to house and train boko haram in a place called ehimen bano in imo state former imo state any more of such facility will be destroyed by biafra forces we call on biafrans to give credible information on any further project of the Nigeria terrorist state targeted at bringing in Boko Haram for training in Biafra land or to be used to house fighters that the intention was to use against Biafra forces. Because the Nigeria terrorist army has been defeated, and all they do is to bring in fighters in whatever guise. Biafra land is not good for Chinese loan. The Biafra people were excluded during the time Nigeria state took loan from China. Our land and our people are not good to be part of the dividend of Chinese loan. Biafra land is not good for rail line 
where every part of Nigeria, as they created it, fraudulently today, has benefited from the rail line, except Biafra land. Biafra land is not good to have seaport, irrespective of the fact that the Gulf of Guinea is connected to the Biafra land. Biafra land is not good for the headquarters of many multinational corporations that came to Nigeria or Niger area to do business only and solely for the natural resources that is found in Biafra land. None of these multinational corporations has their head office or headquarters in Biafra land to create job for the Biafra people, indigenous people. Biafra land is therefore not good for IDP camp or in any name that will accommodate any terrorists from northern Nigeria or from any part of the world. Biafra land is not a dumping ground for terrorists. For that reason, the Biafra Defense Forces have destroyed the, pro the property and the facilities, and of course, anything that is connected to it will be destroyed in Biafra land. It is a message that we are sending out to the terrorist state to prove the capacity that Biafra government controls Biafra territory from exile, and of course, with the activities of the de facto government in the homeland. The responsiveness of the Biafra government has shown that the Biafra government take the security of lives and properties of our people, especially our women and children, very seriously. We have fought Nigeria terrorism for the past three years, secretly. And I wish one day the world will want to know what has happened in Biafra land from 2021 to this date. And we have been able to secure successfully the land of Biafra. It is only in Biafra land that our people are not living in IDP camp. Across Nigeria, every other region, people are living in IDP camp. Like they have come shambolically claiming that people from the north will be moved to Biafra land, where Biafra forces and defense have been able to secure our land against the terrorism. We also have intel that the proposed movement of these people were actually to in order to bring in Boko Haram fighters to Biafra land to fight against Biafra forces. My fellow Biafra, in Yoruba land, the Yorubas are taking refuge in neighboring country, Benin Republic, for insecurity by the Nigeria terrorism or Nigeria terrorist state in the name of the Islamic expansionist Usman Danfodio legacy. Many Yorubas are today living in Benin Republic. They left the ancestral land as they are looking for a safe place to stay. The people that have chased them out of the ancestral land are Fulanese. They call them Fulani Hesmen. They have occupied Yoruba land, and today many of them have left their land and they are not secured in their own land. Biafra land will not be the same. Biafra will continue to respond to Nigeria terrorism plan and tactics very ruthlessly in defense of our land. While Nigeria terrorist state have openly supported Palestine independent and continue to financially support terrorism against Israel. The Biafra people will continue to stand with Israel and at the same time, we are not against those agitating for independence of South Palestine or for self-determination, but we are strongly against the terrorism against Israel and against the state of Israel. Nigeria always go to the United Nations General Assembly to advocate for the freedom and self-determination of Palestine. And these are people who have not fixed their own problem in Niger area. Today, we will do worse 
than what the Palestine have done if that is what will make the world to listen to us. Palestine have not lost 3 million children. We did. We lost 3 million children from 1967 to 1970. Palestine have not lost what Biafra lost. Palestine do not have what Biafra have. We powered Nigeria's economy from our natural resources. What do we get in return? Marginalization killing, pogroms, and what have you. On this note, just for the late comers who have not followed the event of Nigeria and Biafra for a very long time, I want the Biafra media to play the representation and advocating of the independence of Palestine by the former president of Nigeria in the name of Mohammed Buhari, because I have come across many people commenting on social media and they were outraged about the current vice president, who is, by the way, the founder of Boko Haram, advocating for independent state of Palestine. I would like the media team to play that as on that particular rock, I will build my church today. Media team, over to you, please. As we engage in these annual debates, we need to remind ourselves of the principles that led to the founding of the United Nations. Among those are feasible coexistence and self-determination of peoples. In this context, Mr. President, the unresolved question of self-determination for the Palestinian people and, of those, and, and those of Western Sahara, both nations, having been adjudged by the United Nations as qualifying for this inalienable right must now be assured and fulfilled without any further delay or obstacle. <clears throat> the international community has come to pin its hopes on the resolving Palestinian issue through the two-state solution, which recognizes the legitimate right of each state to exist in peace and security. The world has no more excuses or reasons to delay the implementation of the long list of Security Council resolutions on this question. Neither do we have the moral right to deny any people their freedom or condemn them indefinitely to occupation and blockade. <laughs> Mr. President, <coughs> Delegates of member countries, United Nations, 70 years old. It can Thank you very much. I would also like to have the latest video from the United Nations General Assembly of the current Vice President of Nigeria, who was the founder of Boko Haram. Thank you very much. Today, we are all witnesses to the heart-wrenching situation in Gaza and other Palestinian territories. We cannot discuss war and peace, conflicts and resolution, or humanitarian imperatives today without reflecting on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that has been raging since 7th August last year. Of course, the conflict predates this period and has been simmering for a better part of half a century. What it says us is that the international community has failed to live up to the spirit and aspirations of the United Nations to rid the world of inequality, violence and domination of one people by another. Justice is antithetical to revenge. Freedom is an inalienable right and a natural entitlement that cannot be denied to any people. The Palestinian people deserve their independence. They deserve to have a home of their own and territories already recognized by this very assembly and by international law, which has been routinely ignored. Nigeria continues to urge efforts to bring back on track the two-state solution that offers the prospect for a new beginning for the region. Nigeria reaffirms to supporting United Nations peacekeeping operations. We recognize the need for Africa to build strong and professional armies
to meet the multiple challenges we face. Consequently, we reiterate the call for international support to operationalize the African standby post in addition to the provision of requisite support and resources to ensure the upgrade, take up, and effectiveness of a center of excellence on issues of counterterrorism in Africa. Mr. President, reform of the Security Council is critical if the UN is to strengthen its relevance and credibility in our rapidly changing world. Some permanent members of the United Nations Security Council have offered encouraging, if tentative, indications of support on the issue of reform. Thank you very much. My fellow Biafrans and listeners from across the world, with the clip you just listened to, the last one is the current Vice President of Nigeria, who is the founder of Boko Haram. The first video you listened to was the former president of Nigeria, who also was one of the Islamic pillar, fundamentalism pillar in Nigeria and in Africa. Nigeria with this has demonstrated to be enemy of America and enemy of the West. Why the Biafra will continue to support the state of Israel? Have you seen that this is a black and white that can never mix together? Nigeria have advocated for the independent state of Palestine, which we are not against as a people looking for freedom. But what we are against is terrorism against the state of Israel. And the 7th of October attack, terrorism attack against Israel. Biafra people come to continue to condemn that terrorist attack. Nigeria, having advocated in 2024 for the independent state of Palestine, should be bold enough to also accept the outcome of the Biafra self-referendum in peace or in pieces. I want you all to understand that Nigeria can never be trusted. America can never trust Nigeria. The West can never trust Nigeria. Nigeria remains an Islamic fundamentalist country that all the agenda is to support anything anti-West and anti-America. It does not matter how they pretend with you today, they will end up becoming your worst enemy. The earlier the world, the Western world and America accept the state of Biafra as only true allies in the West Africa, the better for them. Examples are many. I will use Iraq. I can also use Afghanistan. After 23 years, America pumped billions of dollars into Afghanistan. Today, Taliban are completely in charge of America weapons that America struggled for 23 years to stabilize that country. Nigeria will do worse than Afghanistan if Biafra is not supported. There are several compelling reasons why as many as 50 million Biafrans who voted in the ongoing Biafra self-referendum, use their vote to advocate for independence of Biafra. The reasons are very numerous. And I will take it one at a time. From the historical injustices against Biafra people, the Nigeria genocidal war against Biafra from 1967 to 1970, also known as the Biafra War, was a brutal chapter in Nigeria history. The Eastern region, known as Biafra, declared independence as the Republic of Biafra after enduring many years of systematic marginalization and violent pogroms. 
in the northern Nigeria, another part of Nigeria. The war resulted in an estimated one to three million deaths, children, primarily from starvation due to the blockade imposed by the Nigeria terrorist government. This tragic history has left deep scars in millions of Biafrans and of course in Biafra consciousness. Especially when the post-war reconciliation was superficial and incomplete with the IRRR. The continuous reference of the Biafra War serves as a painful reminder that the Biafra people were once persecuted and betrayed by a country that was supposed to protect them. That betrayal has tripled today after over 50 years. We have seen the killings of Biafrans and destruction of their businesses across Nigeria. Not just in the northern Nigeria today, but also in the southwest Yoruba land. In Lagos, to be precise, we saw pogroms against their friends in Lagos after the 2023 election. And I will take it on the economic exploitation. As Nigeria celebrate their false failed independence, the division of Nigeria into six geopolitical zone without the consent of the people was an injustice taken too far that I have caught the wound of the war even deeper than as we thought. The eastern region, which supposed to be called southeastern or southeast region in accordance with the geography today it is called the southeast instead of the southern region they manipulated the geography manipulated the demography in order to fight the freedom and suppress and subjugate the afro people not to rise up the region which would form the heart of modern Biafra is rich in natural resources, particularly oil. Despite this wealth, the artificial and the fake Southeast feel disappropriately excluded from the economic and political benefit of their own land. The so called Niger Delta, which majority falls within the Biafra, the proposed Biafra borders of today, generate a significant portion of the Nigeria wealth through crude oil. Yet, that region remains underdeveloped, suffering from poor infrastructure, environmental degradation, and poverty. Yet, they are faced with Nigeria terrorist army bombardment like the recent killing in the Biafra Okoma community in Delta. The argument for Biafra is also an economic one. The resources of the Biafra people are being siphoned to enrich a far distant federal government in Abuja while the region remain underdeveloped that is coming to an end with the declaration of the restoration of independent state of Biafra coming this year, 2024. My fellow Biafrans, we also suffered what I call the political marginalization within the Nigeria state. Since the end of the Biafra war, Biafra people have constantly been sidelined from the Nigeria political landscape, despite being one of the three largest ethnic groups, 
No Igbo speaking Biafra person has held the presidency since 1983. Key government positions, security appointment, and the military leadership role are disproportionately skewed in favor of the Northern Hausa Fulani and Western Yoruba elite. Many Igbo speaking Biafrans believe, and of course, it's a fact that this is a deliberate exclusion from power to prevent their voices from being heard in decision making process. Why those who happen to be very close to power have sold their subconsciousness to self aggrandizement? Those who may have positive agenda that could shape the country future are not allowed. Today, we are no longer agitating for inclusion, but for complete freedom of Biafra people, where the aspiration of every Biafran will be achieved, where the potential will be attained, where Biafrans will compete among nations in innovation, where free education will be mandatory, where our hospitals will be equipped, and the national insurance scheme will be completely functional. My fellow Biafrans, compelling reasons why Biafrans are leaving Nigeria are many. I'm just taking a few of them today. We have also cultural and ethnic disparities. Nigeria is an amalgamation of hundreds of ethnic groups with distinct cultures languages and world views. Biafrans, with their entrepreneurial spirit, democratic social structure, and emphasis on individual merit, often find themselves at odds with a more hierarchical, feudal system, and I call it nomadic system of the North, and the communal political structure of the Yoruba West. Many believe that the deep seated differences between the ethnic groups in Nigeria makes it difficult to forge a cohesive national identity, which is fact, leading to continuous frictions and disharmony, and I call it dangerous diversity, which will never ever work in the modern age. Biafra, on the other hand, would allow the people to govern themselves according to their own culture and cultural value and system in a confederation and a confederating state of Biafra. The insecurity and violence orchestrated by the Nigeria terrorist state against Biafra people from inception, ethnic violence, Islamic expansionists, violence, banditry, and terrorism have been on the rise across Nigeria. With the Biafra people often caught in the crossfire, in particular, they come in the form of Boko Haram, Fulani Hesmen, and the other extremist group. They have targeted civilians with the government sometime supporting them to offer adequate protection in many cases, the Biafra people are specifically victimized with the Nigeria state either unwilling or unable to ensure their security. The renewed call for Biafra is rooted in the fact that an independent state of Biafra would be better equipped to secure the lives and property of its citizens, free from corruption and inefficiencies of the Nigeria terrorist government. I want to remind you that a few years ago, heads were being beheaded in Biafra land today. That particular insecurity killings of Biafra have ended with the emergence of the Biafra Defense Force. And of course, with the formation of the Biafra government 
both de facto government and government in exile. We are also facing, within the Nigeria state, youth unemployment and economic stagnation. The Biafra people are renewed for their entrepreneurial pros with successful business ventures both within Nigeria and across the world. Despite this, many young Biafrans face a high level of unemployment and underemployment. The Nigeria terrorist government inability to create an enabling environment for business growth and industrialization disproportionately affect the Southeast and South-South, which made up the entire Biafra land. The region, poor infrastructure, including electricity, road, education, hinders the full realization of the economic potential of Biafra people. An independent state of Biafra will prioritize regional development focusing on innovation, trade, and infrastructure, on combat by the inefficiencies of the central government. Biafra, as an independent nation, will secure the Gulf of Guinea, and of course, end the piracy in the high sea, which has caused serious tension, carrying out international trade using the high sea and waterways. The emergence of Biafra will put an end to the piracy in the high sea. I want you to understand that the more you try to deprive yourself of this truth, the more you are caught in the cobweb of the truth. The resurgence of ethnic nationalism in Nigeria, we have seen in recent time, the resurgence of ethnic nationalism caused by the dangerous diversity. Example of it, if you go to social media, you're going to find out there is a very big resurgence of ethnic nationalism. Our sister, for example, in Canada, her case is an example of that. Nigeria swing into action within one minute, writing to Canadian government, the House of, uh, House of Assembly or House of Rep, wrote a letter within a short uh, period of time, Eurobus on social media, of course, because she is a Biafran. In recent years, the global climate has become more supportive of self-determination and the secessionist movement. From the independent referenda in Scotland, even in Catalonia, though they are not yet independent, but the creation of this awareness in support of self-referendum has gained global support. My fellow Biafrans, we have seen the state creation like the state of Sudan, South Sudan. There is a growing recognition that ethnic groups have right to determine their own future, just like you're listing from the Nigeria representative at the United Nations, the vice president, current vice president of Nigeria, supporting this particular move, move, move. The Biafra government has also continued to argue in international stage that the right to self-determination is enshrined in international law and the Biafra people have also activated this particular law by organizing their own self-referendum, which Biafra people are very happy to participate in and have voted and the voting is still ongoing and will continue until November 28, 2024. The opportunity to vote on their future through a peaceful and democratic process organized by the Biafra government in exile and the de facto government in the homeland. The referendum has recorded over 50 million votes as of today, 1st of October 2024. My fellow Biafrans, 
I want you to understand that the call for Biafra independence is not a rejection of Nigeria or a, reject, a rejection of Britain, but it is a demand for justice, dignity, and equality. For many Biafrans, remaining in a system that continually marginalizes, exploits, and devalues them is untenable. Biafra offers the promise of self-determination, economic progress, cultural preservation, and security of a nation where the Biafra spirit can strive without the constraint of a broken federation. Why the road to Biafra independence is fraught with challenges, the desire for a better, more equitable future fuels the call for the exit of Biafra from Nigeria. And Simon Ekpa is leading Biafra out of Nigeria from the 2nd of December 2024. Biafra government has activated the international diplomatic puzzle against Nigeria at the highest level. My fellow Biafrans, with this, I welcome you to the month of October 2024. We have just less than two months to kickstart our convention in Finland. May God bless the state of Biafra. May God bless the state of Israel. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless Finland and may God bless Europe. May God bless the Western world. We love you all. From Biafra people, from the Biafra Liberation Army, from the Biafra government, to all of you. We stand together in this particular time of trial. Israel, stand very strong. You have your brothers from Biafra land and nothing can separate us. From here, from me, airborne to the Biafra Defense Forces, airborne to the IDF, airborne to those who believe that freedom is taken and not given. May God bless you. May God bless Biafra. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you so much for sticking to this video to the end. Like I said before, now it's time for us to go to the comment section to air our mind and our opinion. Say what you think about this video and this platform. Do it constructively. Share this video. Like, subscribe, and also continue to watch Linda's TV show because this is the home of news. Until I see you again in my next video, remain blessed. For now, I would say bye-bye.